Welcome back to the City Current Show. I'm your host, Jeremy Park. We're always honored to bring you inspiring stories of individuals and organizations making a difference and powering the good. And in this case, we're talking about the Greater Memphis Chairman Circle with the Greater Memphis Chamber. We're honored to be joined by the 2023 Chairman of the Greater Memphis Chairman Circle, Michael Scarborough. How are you doing? Jeremy, I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me today. Absolutely. So we have a lot of good to unpack with the Greater Memphis Chamber, the Chairman's Circle, but give us a little bit of your backstory and tied to coming in as the 2023 Chairman. Great. Well, again, uh, so just quick background on myself. In 2019, I was on your show when I was starting a company here locally called Prospero Health. And uh, that company uh, developed tremendously since our interview last time. And it's now a part of uh, the Optum family of companies. And uh, Optum at Home is how we're referred to these days. And so uh, the work I had in in growing and developing a business here in Memphis and uh, getting involved with the Greater Memphis Chambers work, and in particular, the Chairman Circle's work, uh, is uh, something that's uh, been a big part, I think, of our just giving back uh, to the community here as uh, we try to make good things happen in Memphis. So the Chairman Circle is celebrating 10 years. Give us a little bit of background about what the Chairman Circle is and does. Great question, Jeremy. So 10 years ago, you know, the, the Greater Memphis Chamber was in a very different place. It received a, a significant amount of funding from local government. And one of the things our business leaders really began to look at at that time was if we wanted to continue to move this community forward, we needed the chamber to be a voice for business in Memphis. And it couldn't do that if some of the positions it needed to advocate for might be contrarian to what the uh, maybe local governments were uh, most interested in. And so uh, the chairman circle was birthed really with a way to raise money uh, from the business community to replace those local government funds and eliminate taking any of those local funds. And that was achieved 10 years ago. At the same time, it was also to focus on what were called moon missions, which were these really big ideas of what could what could the uh, business community do to change the trajectory of our city and improve things uh, in our community. And so those uh, some of those initiatives uh, had some great success, things like uh, Epicenter were launched out of those moon missions. And so while that's a seed funding from the uh, chairman circle. And so as we've kind of evolved over the the last 10 years, today we're at a place where, you know, we're really focused on three major areas of work. And that is economic development, workforce development, and our kind of public policy and our business climate. And so that's kind of how we've evolved over the past 10 years. And uh, some of the leads us into some of the work we're doing today. Absolutely. And so let's go ahead and dive in because when you talk about the work and success, you're having some great success. And I think when you talk about economic development, obviously the big accolades around Blue Oval City and Ford, that's a big one. But there's also a lot of smaller ones that I think need celebration as well that really lead to big opportunities. And so go ahead and and let's start around workforce and talent. And so you've got one of the things that touches on this as a one-stop job center. So touch a little bit on that side. Yeah, so I think, you know, as we talk about uh, economic development, right, and we want to bring new employers, uh, new businesses into our community. And, you know, the, the direct work of the chamber over the last several years has brought in or retained 65,000 jobs, $12 billion in capital investment in the last 10 years. And so while we're having great success on the economic development front, certainly with Blue Oval City and all the related supplier announcements, which will be coming over the next year or two, all right, we've, we've got a lot of wind in our sails on the economic development front. One of the things that became clearer, I think, to us in the chairman circle was we need a way to rapidly develop our workforce to be ready for these new opportunities that are coming. Very different skills that may be required in things like advanced manufacturing, uh, with the work around uh, electrification, not just of cars, but many other things, certainly requires a lot of different skills than maybe what many people were trained for, you know, a decade or you know, 20, 30 years ago. And so uh, a group of chairman circle investors last January took a field trip to Orlando, Florida to see 
a program uh, launched at Valencia Community College, and it is basically an accelerated job skills credentialing program. And so think of the concept of when you think of an adult maybe going back to school, uh, they may go back to school for you know, one, two, maybe even three years, right? It's a really long commitment for what is usually a pretty broad set of learnings. What our, what our workforce really needs and what our, what our business members need is rapid readiness for the types of skills and jobs they need right now. And so you, what you really need is a much more compressed kind of training time frame in very specific skills. And so basically the idea of credentialing and so the one-stop job center that we're working to launch next year is a physical site where individuals can come, you know, one-stop shop. So a place where they can get credentialed accelerated skills training and kind of an eight to 24 week time frame, get a very specific skill in a very specific area, leave that program with a certificate, think of almost like a diploma that they can then present to an employer and say, I know how to do this very specific thing, whether it's running a certain type of machine, certain type of process. I've now got a skill that you are seeking in the marketplace and I'm ready to do that. And so in addition to that skills training, the one-stop shop aspect is a broader set of support services that help enable individuals to be successful while they go through this. And that can be everything from childcare, transportation, job placement, just a whole host of opportunities. Uh, high school diploma, if they uh, lack a high school diploma, an opportunity to also get a high school diploma. Uh, what we may have oftentimes thought of as a GED in the past is now a, a much more robust uh, process that individuals need to go through. And so think of all of that under one roof here in Memphis. And that's what we are in the process of launching and building. And I think it creates a full circle what you're talking about because the new businesses coming into our area, they need a qualified workforce. And then all of a sudden having a qualified workforce attracts more business and more opportunities. And it also too is an opportunity for us when you talk about generational poverty and how do we move families into success and thriving? It's with education and employment opportunities, just like we're talking about. And I agree. You're, you're seeing a big shift in terms of learning from the long periods versus the short and very focused so that we can get you in, get you certified. You walk out with something tangible and you can jump into a job pretty quickly to be able to move the needle for you and your family. And so I think all of this plays a role with workforce development, but also economic development, just like we're talking about. Carry that into the digital delta. So what is the digital delta and, and the electrification, so, so to speak, of the Mid-South? Yeah, so Jeremy, I think, you know, that to your point, right, the, the work we're doing on workforce development, economic development are just hand in glove, right? You really can't have one without the other, right? You, you know, um, and so when you think about the digital delta, you know, this is the, the term we've come up with to really kind of describe where Memphis is, and really an incredible collection of businesses, industries, and technologies that we already have here that position Memphis for the next 40 to 50 years, right? As you think about where the economy is going and the electrification of things, right? Everything from cars and, uh, you know, digital apparatuses that, you know, certainly are, uh, prevalent in all of our lives and certainly going to become more prevalent, you know, not that we're necessarily going to be, uh, you know, the replacement for Silicon Valley, maybe in software, uh, but we certainly could be uh, a hub for and already a hub for much of the hardware that powers our future economy. And so the digital delta is really about how do we continue to build on this natural strength that we have, this mixture of industries and this growing mixture of industries that are so well positioned. And to your point earlier, right, how do we keep a pipeline of workforce ready for those jobs, which makes the next economic development prospect look and say, wow, there are a lot of great companies just like mine already in Memphis. That tells me you have the type of workforce that can fill up my factory, warehouse, whatever, that's doing something highly automated, you know, 
highly differentiated in the future. And all of those things ultimately lead to how we combat uh, poverty in our city, right? One of the things, you know, really the, the moniker or, uh, for the Greater Memphis Chamber's Chairman Circle is prosperity for all. And it's really the relentless pursuit of that. And so, you know, we feel like our job, our mission, if you will, is to be focused on addressing better jobs, better opportunities, continue to develop and, and improve upon the quality of companies in our marketplace that create those better paying jobs and better paying opportunities for everybody. And so this is, this is one of those areas where we feel like we are kind of, again, rubber to the road, right? This is, this is our lane and you know, this is what we are, we are gonna drive towards in the future. We've had a couple of opportunities to sit down with the Greater Memphis Chamber team. And in one, it was really focused on this workforce development, economic development piece. And one of the things that I really appreciated was the intentionality around as these new businesses come in and we work together, it's not just about recruiting new talent to the area and having the outside talent move in. It's around how do we go into areas, especially of, you know, the generational poverty and intentionally lift those those neighborhoods, those communities so that we're rising together. It's it's not just bringing in, you know, the new the new individuals and new professionals. It's literally how do we make sure that we're lifting our own community? And so I I love the, you know, the strategic piece of this in terms of not forgetting about our, our own citizens to be able to help lift. So talk about how all this ties into a plan, especially around 2030. And so Prosper Memphis, talk about Prosper Memphis 2030. Yeah, so Jeremy, you know, um, as you think about the points you just made about um, how to really address generational poverty and, you know, not just new businesses, but existing businesses, I'll quickly kind of point to, you know, the recent announcement for the old Wesson oil plant uh, here in South Memphis, which was do for re, you know decommissioning right it was it's a very old facility uh, you know cooking oil refinery uh, and you know basically our you know announcement just a few weeks ago uh, by their parent company to invest hundreds of millions of dollars in rebuilding that plant you know a completely new modernized plant which you know will protect the jobs of over a hundred current employees and create new opportunities that'll last for generations in a community that needs investment. And so those are exactly the kind of things we wanna be focused on is, it's great to have those new companies join our market, but we wanna make sure our existing companies are strengthened and prepared for the future. And so all of that really feeds into our Prosper Memphis 2030 plan, which is really focused on three major points, right? And I think just bringing focus to the work that we're doing. And so one is we wanna have 50,000 high quality jobs uh, and not just 50,000 high quality jobs and 50% of those new jobs occupied by minorities. Uh, we want 700 new advanced industry firms in our market. And you think about 700 new companies coming in, creating 50,000 new jobs, half, at least half of those filled by minorities. And we want 20,000 annual STEM graduates from our institutes of higher learning. So today we have around 5,000 STEM graduates a year. And so we want to see that quadruple. And why do we want that? Because those are the kinds of degrees that are going to be necessary. In addition to the kind of short-term credentialing that we talked about, we also want to make sure that those who are choosing to go to an institution of higher learning, getting a four-year degree, are getting those degrees in the areas where the jobs are going to be in the future. And those areas are in STEM, you know, STEM areas. And so... All of these are sort of the points of how we position Memphis by 2030 to be ready for what's going to happen in the next decade. Yeah. And all this, uh, you know, it plays an important role. So as you step back from a community who's watching or listening to this interview and you think, you know, how does all this matter? Why does this matter to me? All of this matters greatly in terms of job opportunities, but really around, you know, when you talk about a vibrant community, a safe community cutting down on the crime, more restaurants, more retail, more things to do, like all of this plays a vital role in opportunities, but growth and success broadly for our city. And so I think it's extremely important, everything we're talking about in terms of why it matters long-term for our city. What's something that really makes you excited when you look at all this 
and everything that we're talking about, obviously that's exciting, but what's, what's something else that really is exciting or puts a smile on your face when you look at where we're headed with this? Well, you know, look, overall, I think, um, I think, you know, our business leaders, you know, in the chairman circle and certainly, you know, I'll speak for myself individually, we, we hate poverty and what it is, you know, what it is doing in our community. And we want to see that vibrant community you were talking about, Jeremy. We want to see that for everybody. We want to see neighborhoods rebirth. We want to see opportunity abound because that's how we address things like crime. That's how we address quality of living, right? These are the kinds of things that will make our community more robust. And we really have to find a way to do that for everybody. We've got to create those kinds of opportunities that doesn't leave people behind, right? And so while we're busy focusing on bringing in new jobs, uh, we want to make sure that we're not just uh, recycling existing jobs and people in those jobs to just a different job. That's great, right? But we want to make sure that we have net new opportunities for individuals, right? You know, how do you move somebody from a $12 an hour job to an $18 an hour job? How do you move somebody from a $15 an hour job to a $25 an hour job? And each one of those moves, right? That's how you begin to lift a community up and bring along, a, a you know, a, really an entire city into the future, right? And so what I'm excited for is despite all of Memphis's challenges, and we all know those are many, we are so well positioned. And that's what excites me, right? Is that we have so many strengths. And what we're really trying to do is harness those strengths, position us well for the future. There's some things we can be really, really good at that our country and our world needs a whole lot of. And I think our community, our population are very well positioned to be a part of that future. And so I look at it as really a way to make you know, my children and my grandchildren's future in this city uh, as bright and hopeful as, I, as it has been for me. Yeah. And I think that's the key is we want the city to be successful. We love Memphis, the Mid-South. We want and need and, you know, we want to pour in and be a part of the solution. I think that's the beautiful thing is, you know, just like we're talking about with the chairman circle, the Greater Memphis Chamber. There are people, there are organizations, there are companies, you know, all these who are raising their hands saying, hey, I want to be a part of the solution. I want to help. Let's make a difference and let's do it together. And so I think, you know, that in and of itself is good news for our community because there are people who are passionate, who are trying to make a difference each and every day. And that's what ultimately is going to help move our city forward. And so talk about where we can go to learn more about the chairman circle. How can we get involved? Where do we go? Well, I would just say, look, you know, to the extent uh, you're interested in the work of the Greater Memphis Chamber, it's particularly if you're a business in our community and you want to be become a member, certainly go to the Greater Memphis Chamber's website. You can learn a lot about different membership options. Certainly the Chairman Circle is a significant investment. We don't expect everybody, every business in our community to be able to contribute at that level. But every member matters. Every voice matters in our business community. And so I would just say continue to follow us along there. Look for in the next six to nine months, some exciting announcements on the workforce development front. So you'll be seeing more about that uh, on the news and in the various news outlets and social media channels you may follow. Uh, that, that is going to be the physical manifestation of all this great work. When you see a 100,000 square foot plus facility go up in a, in a neighborhood that you might not expect it to go up in, that's when you're going to really be able to see the kind of things we're talking about come to life. Yeah, I love it. Good news indeed. So Michael Scarborough, 2023 chairman of the Greater Memphis Chairman Circle. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for serving our community. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you so much, Jeremy. Have a great day.